Welcome to Brand Ad, I'm John Timmerman. Today, I wanna to talk about four companies that have grown their company four different ways and how you can learn from them to grow your company. Okay, first company I wanna talk about is Dollar Shave Club. I've talked about them before in the show, but they grew their brand from almost nothing to being bought for $1 billion several years ago. It's an amazing story and the place that they started from was creating one viral video, which most of you out there have seen before. Hi, I'm Mike, founder of dollarshaveclub.com. What is dollarshaveclub.com? Well, for a dollar a month, we send high quality razors right to your door. Yeah, a dollar. Are the blades any good? No. Our blades are f***ing great. Each razor has stainless steel blades, an aloe vera lubricating strip, and a pivot head. It's so gentle a toddler could use it. And do you like spending $20 a month on brand name razors? 19 go to Roger Federer. I'm good at tennis. And do you think your razor needs a vibrating handle, a flashlight, a back scratcher, and 10 blades? Your handsome ass grandfather had one blade and polio. Looking good, pop up. Stop paying for shave tech you don't need. And stop forgetting to buy your blades every month. Alejandro and I are gonna ship them right to you. We're not just selling razors. We're also making new jobs. Alejandro, what were you doing last month? Not working. What are you doing now? Working. I'm no Vanderbilt, but this train makes hay. So stop forgetting to buy your blades every month and start deciding where you're gonna stack all those dollar bills I'm saving you. We are dollarshaveclub.com and the party is on. Now in current marketing terms, this is called an anchor video and there's several companies that specialize in this type of video. Uh, we produce them at Good Monster on a smaller scale, but it's basically a funny infomercial and its intention is to go viral. Now today, currently companies do this, they use Facebook ads and YouTube ads to kind of get some fire underneath it and then they expect that paid movement to get some legs and, and to go viral and to be shared, right? So this anchor video took Dollar Shave Club and exploded them to something like 25 million views on YouTube and this spawned into PR coverage about how awesome it was. But you have to realize that it's a lot harder to do that today. It was so successful for Dollar Shave Club because no companies had really done that before. There had been funny videos like Super Bowl commercials and there had been infomercials like QVC, but what they did is they smashed the two together to create this really unique, at the time, uh, marketing concept that went viral Viral. It was very shareable for everyday people like you and I. They also did it at a time when social media was really ramping up and really growing and really new. So it was perfect timing and it was a concept that hadn't been done yet, but it effectively projected them into the stratosphere and eventually led to them being bought for one billion dollars, which is insane. But the lesson here is that invest in low cost, relatively new attention. And this, if you have the right message, this could really launch your brand into the stratosphere as well. The second brand I want to talk about is Gymshark. Now Gymshark is an athletic wear company that started several years ago. And if you look up their story, it's really cool because it was started by two young kids that just had a passion for fitness. And they started literally making their own shirts, like sewing them themselves figuring out how to screen print. It was really awesome. And what they did is they started leveraging influencers at the time to wear their clothing by just sending them a package of, they had like these bodybuilder kind of tank top shirts. They sent them, they had a shark on the front of them and these kind of well-known bodybuilders at the time and fitness enthusiasts at the time, they had social media following. Again, this was kind of in the earlier days of social media, but they would wear them. And then other people were like, where did you get that? And then they referred them back to Gymshark. So Gymshark really leveraged influencers and you can still see remnants of that today. I'm sure you've actually seen their brand out there. And if you haven't, just Google Gymshark or go on to Instagram or YouTube or Facebook and type in Gymshark and you'll see millions of people wearing their clothes and now it's a badge of honor because they've done such a good job growing their brand. But the same lesson stands true. They went all in on influencer marketing at a time when it was new and they saw that growth and they went further in on it, kept leveraging it and wrote 
rode that snowball down the hill. The next brand I want to talk about is MVMT, Movement Watches. Man, until death means, uh, means go all in, you know? Okay, today, you ready? Let's get it. I mean, me, obviously, it's skateboarding, but anything you uh, do So, life, Movement you started actually on Kickstarter, I believe. Maybe it was Indiegogo, but it was a crowdfunding platform, and they put their minimalist watches. They actually sort of looked a lot like this. This isn't a movement watch, but uh, they're minimalist watches, great design, but lower cost than the kind of more premier brands out there. They launched on uh, crowdfunding and it did well. And they did something like 200 or between 200, 200 and $300,000. And then they used that to launch their own Shopify brand and grew their e-commerce. Now they were e-commerce only, they weren't sold in stores. And so it was a true digitally native brand. But what they did is because they had such a focus photogenic product and it's very easy for people to create content because all you do is you take your phone, hold your hand out and take a picture of it. That became kind of the staple photo that you do with a movement watch. And so they grew their brand on the backs of user generated content. It's very similar to influencer marketing, but it's more kind of the everyday person. So what they did is they took their watches, they would send them to people creating really high quality content. A lot of travel photographers, and, and uh, Instagrammers that had a really good, clean design to their content, and they asked them to take pictures. And then they used this content to fuel their own Instagram channels and other social media channels until it really took fire. Uh, and now when you check their social media platforms, their website, anywhere you look at a, a movement brand or movement watch, it has a very clean, consistent brand. Uh, so they did a great job using this user-generated content, curating content that had the same look and feel and just growing that until I think 2018 revenue was about 120 million dollars and the kids are still in their mid-20s it's it's a really an awesome story and the last example is zappos.com Most of you out there know Zappos.com. They were purchased a long time ago, like 2009 or something like that, by Amazon for $928 million. And Zappos is very well known for their customer service. In fact, they forewent uh, a lot of investment in marketing and instead invested in their customer service. And so they were one of the first ones to do uh, things like, you know, money back guarantees and you can send your shoes back, return them, you know, at any time. They did all this crazy stuff to make sure that they were putting their customers first and that took hold in the media and it also got a lot of customers to tell their friends about Zappos and how amazing the customer service is. There's actually stories out there that you can Google about customer service reps staying on the phone with people, with customers for like five or six hours straight, just talking with them like people. And that's insane if you think about it from a, from a business standpoint and an investment standpoint. You're investing your money in having one customer service rep spend six hours on the phone with a customer, but that one story then got a lot of news publication. Can you imagine that customer and how many people they told about how awesome Zappos is? So the lesson here is that you need to invest, especially in today's day and age, you need to invest a lot of resources and time into your customer service because it will make up for things like product missteps, brand missteps, PR nightmares. If you can get your customers in your quarter to go to battle for you, you're gonna have a really good chance to grow your brand. Thanks everyone for watching this episode of brand ed. If you like the show, make sure you subscribe on our YouTube channel. Um, and if you have any questions, I'd love to discuss your thoughts in this episode or any future episodes. So hop over to Twitter, find me uh, at Johnny Timbo on Twitter. And until next time, have a great day.